Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries in regards to the cosmic web. The largest structure found in the universe that essentially represents a kind of a filament made out of hundreds of thousands of different galaxies stretching for millions of light years between various clusters. And though the structure itself remained more or less hypothetical for many many decades, it wasn't until recently, in the last decade, that we actually started to discover more and more evidence for its existence and, more importantly, uncover some really unusual things about it and even take pictures of the actual web. And while in the last few months several scientists tried to do this again by conducting observations in various wavelengths, helping us understand the web a little bit more. And so let's talk about some of these discoveries in more detail, but I guess let's start with a bit of a history just so that you understand what we're actually discussing. And here everything starts in the mid-80s. In 1986, we had the first observation and the first publication that essentially discovered an unusual filament connecting galaxies, reported by the scientists behind this paper in the study A Slice of the Universe. It was essentially a discovery of unusual grouping of galaxies that was not expected, but that was quickly discovered to be pretty common out there. And it only took three more years to discover something even larger. This was a discovery of CFA2, also known as the Coma Wall. A really large filament of galaxies containing lots and lots of matter inside that was approximately 500 million light years across. An enormous structure and something that back then could not be imagined or explained. But by 1990s it was explained and now had a name. This was now referred to as the galactic filament, with the larger structure being referred to as the cosmic web. The actual term cosmic web was coined in 1996 by Richard Bond. And as soon as it was discovered to exist, more and more individual discoveries started to be made. The next large discovery was the Sloan Great Wall, found in 2003, which was even larger and more massive, and pretty much every year after that there were new discoveries of additional filaments or additional walls as they're also known, which essentially represented these huge conglomerates of many different galaxies and gas together, often stretching for millions of light years, or in some cases even billions of light years. And with the advances in supercomputers, it also became possible to simulate this just to see how this forms and to confirm the existence of this very bizarre structure. And it was mostly explained through the models involving dark matter. When dark matter collapses under its own gravity, it essentially creates this very strange scaffolding for the entire universe where gas starts to accumulate and starts to form galaxies which then turn into clusters. With the largest filament discovered so far, referred to as the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, that seems to be almost 10 billion light years in length, with many smaller filaments connecting to it and voids formed in between. And some of the recent research even discovered how all of this potentially started and how all of this evolved by discovering structures in the early universe, such as structures involving quasars, specifically large quasar groups, which existed in the first two billion years, with many of them serving as a kind of a proto-cluster or a galactic filament precursor. And the first such discovery was in 2013 of the Large Quasar Group, also known as U1.27. It seems to contain 73 quasars in it, and it seems to be almost 4 billion light years across, but essentially represents one of these filaments actively forming in the early universe. And even more recently, one of the biggest discoveries from the James Webb was essentially an image from even earlier times, when the scientists using the James Webb discovered a thread-like arrangement of 10 galaxies that basically existed 800 million years after the Big Bang. Literally, as soon as galaxies started forming, they seemed to have coalesced into these filaments, very likely as a result of dark matter interaction. But so far all of these observations were mostly of galactic structures or galaxies bunching together and not the actual web. Now we actually discussed some of the previous discoveries when this web was imaged by various telescopes, but trying to capture the image of it is obviously extremely challenging. And for obvious reasons. It's extremely diffuse when it comes to gas, and dark matter as of today is extremely difficult to detect. But based on multiple simulations and various studies, we know that most of the mass in the universe seems to be actually inside this intergalactic medium and inside the cosmic web and not inside galaxies. And so trying to see what's inside is naturally important for cosmology and for trying to understand how galaxies evolve. And while in one of the most recent studies, researchers used hundreds of hours of telescope time to capture one of the highest resolution images of a single cosmic filament connecting two forming galaxies. And this time from early universe, when the universe was only 2 billion years old. 
And here's what this image looked like. Here we finally get to see gas, and in this case in three dimensions, because here scientists relied on a new instrument known as MUSE, which stands for Multi-Unit Spectroscopic Explorer, this is on top of a very large telescope in Chile, that's designed to capture three-dimensional data by combining images and spectroscopic observations in multiple wavelengths at the same time. And here this filament seems to connect two independent quasars, approximately 3 million light years away from one another, and so this filament is 3 million light years across. But more importantly, the scientists in the study have now actually provided a new technique that allows us to map the intergalactic filament quite efficiently, which may lead to much bigger and better maps in the future. And more importantly, they even compared this to some of the recent simulations, in this case using supercomputers, and the actual results seem to be very similar. In other words, the simulated universe seems to be very similar to the one observed in real life, at least when it comes to this filament and the large massive galaxies connecting two points. But then, in a separate study, researchers also wanted to see this in the X-rays, mostly because we know that gas that's present here is also very likely kind of hot, which means that it should be visible as a kind of a soft X-ray glow, because a lot of these very hot atoms are going to be emitting a lot of X-rays, especially in locations where cosmic filament tends to form denser environments and various shock waves. And so here the temperature was always predicted to be between 100,000 and 10 million Kelvin. But obviously containing very diffuse gas, so it will be very difficult to see. And so this time researchers used a different telescope and examined X-ray emissions from 8,000 cosmic filaments detected by other studies. And they essentially wanted to combine these observations in order to find out the average temperature inside and also the average density of gas compared to, for example, voids nearby. And so here they used data from the SDSS Sloan Digital Sky Survey that contained X-ray emissions from almost 8,000 cosmic filaments, and the observations from the space telescope known as Erosita that collected X-ray data for several years. And in the process they discovered that these filaments are indeed pretty hot and do indeed contain quite a lot of stuff. They seem to be at least 76 times more dense than nearby voids and seem to contain stuff that's approximately 7 million Kelvin on average. So basically almost as predicted and yeah, very, very hot. And these observations also confirm that this is indeed where most of the mass in the universe seems to be hiding, with most of this just being pristine hydrogen that's never been used for anything and never participated in any star formation or any galactic activity, just floating in this cosmic web for billions and billions of years. Which by itself is of course a somewhat mind-blowing discovery. And last but not least, we also had observations in radio light in order to confirm that these cosmic webs also produce just a little bit of magnetic fields. And that's because, hypothetically, as this gas moves around and as it creates shock waves, it should also generate magnetic fields by various energetic particles in motion, which then also reinforce motion of other particles, creating a kind of a self-feeding loop. And so this time, by using the Australian Murchison Wide Field Array Radio Telescope, scientists were able to observe these shock waves around a pair of galactic clusters and the filament that seems to connect them. And in order to create this, they basically looked at several layers between these galaxies, in order to produce a kind of a stacked image. And so here, by combining these stacks, they were then able to form something resembling this. And so here what you're looking at is a bunch of frames from this stack as it moves through the filament and as it shows us various radio emissions from the magnetic fields inside this filament, all produced by various shock waves around these galaxies that then generate radio waves as a result of magnetism. And also obviously confirming that magnetic fields and magnetic lines exist inside filaments as well. So definitely some really exciting discoveries of something that we thought was super mysterious just a few decades ago, and I'm sure even more discoveries will be made in the next year, because in just the last 10 years we've discussed this topic so many times because of so many new exciting discoveries. You can actually learn about some of them in some of the videos in the description, but until future discoveries, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.